When it comes to all the different aspects of fashion, I feel like footwear is my favorite. And even though fall winter weather is quickly approaching, which means snow and slush for where I live, I still love wearing the nicest shoes I can when I'm out and about. And over the course of my life, I've never, and I do mean never, owned this many pairs of shoes, boots, sneakers, slip-ons, mogs, mogs, moccasins, whatever you want to call them my entire life and in today's video i'm gonna show you my collection hopefully you learn and see some shoes you've never seen before i'm a big new balance head when it comes to sneakers i like my boots to be dog martens and i have a kick for onitsuka tiger ap big logo sneakers if you know what that is then you know and for those of you who don't know me my name is drew what do and for those of you who do know me you know how we get down bop appreciate you guys for tuning in today Without further ado, let's get into the sneaker collection review. I think it's important to add this disclaimer. By no means do I want to gloat or brag or boast about the ability to acquire sneakers. I know a lot of people are in tons of different situations out there in the world. This video is meant to be one entertainment based and just bring a little bit of value, a little bit of positivity to your life and to talk about some of the things that I have a passion for. So don't take it as a way of me kind of gloating or boasting about shoes that I own. For each shoe that I show, I'm gonna to try to talk a little bit about how I was able to acquire them, how long I've been using them, if I like them or I don't like them, and kind of just break down the different elements of them, just give a little mini review of each shoe. A whole lot of rhyming going on right now. I currently have a little bit less than I would say 25 shoes at the moment, which for me, like I said, is the most I've ever had in my entire life. I don't think you need a collection with a thousand sneakers or hundreds of sneakers, unless you wanna have that collection, it's up to you. But for me personally, once you kind of get to 20 shoes, it's kind of hard to wear them. You know what I mean? It's tough to wear every single shoe. And so in the future, I probably will be looking to sell some of these in the future. So that's just the truth. Okay, so I basically have all my shoes laid out on the floor. What I wanna do is I wanna start with New Balance. So I'm gonna move all the New Balance shoes over here. All of my New Balance sneakers are right below me. I have one, two, three, four, five, six pairs of New Balances. And New Balance in terms of sneakers is definitely my favorite. Wait, hold on. I forgot to turn my light on. Let's see. Hey. <laughs> New Balance is definitely my favorite sneaker brand at the moment. I think growing up, I was into like Nike's, I think a lot, like a lot of people, like Nike was the most prominent brand, the biggest brand in the early 20 teens. And then Adidas had a moment. So I had some boot, some boot shoes and that was like college high school. And now out of college high school, all my, all my grown man, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Not like New Balance, even though some of these shoes, like this one right here is a very hyped up, uh, very popular shoe. So let's just go through all of them. Let's just start with the ALD 550s, why don't we? So these are the New Balance M.A. Leon Door P550s. I also have on foots for each of these. The story behind getting these, I got the pairs, they got the 2020 pairs and I love them. I ended up selling all of my 2020 pairs to be honest because I saw the images for these and I was like, I want these more than I wanted the kind of simple 2020 pairs. And for whatever reason, this green, like cream, yellow, Everything about this shoe just is really, really beautiful to me. It has a has a really cool basketball 80s, 90s feel that isn't a Jordan 1, which I feel like the entire um, basketball, sneaker, athleisure, athletic wear genre is dominated by Michael Jordan sneakers. And I feel like this shoe is a breath of fresh air for someone who, I like Jordans, but like, I don't know, there's something about them that hasn't always resonated with me as much. And these shoes definitely fill that void as someone who played basketball, who was a hooper, played division one and those kind of things. So this shoe is beautiful to me i went true to size on these i took these with me to san francisco i wear these all the time i need to put these in my rotation more because i love them they're extremely comfortable the heel opening is a little bit wide for some reason and that does sometimes cause heel slippage and i have like a very narrow foot and heel but i also think that the kind of four foot area of the shoe is nice and fits really nicely i wonder if aod actually will come out with a restock of these like they did with the original four. I'm curious. Either way, super dope. Next, let's talk about one of the more kind of recent, very, very hyped up shoes. Actually, will come out the day of the release of this video. Not hyped up, but I feel like a lot of people are creating some buzz for this shoe. And these are the Jound New Balance 990 V4s. Let's see if we can get it to focus. Boom. You see that JJJ? J? 
JJJ hit right there. <laughs> these are the these are the 990v4s, and the thing I like about these is the kind of monotone nature. I think the color of these actually suits fall very well. A shoe that's not going to show very much dirt. A shoe that you can wear when it's like raining or whatever, and will be able to kind of keep the quality of the shoe looking very good. These also come with an extra pair of laces that I know a lot of people are more excited about than the natural laces, but I, I don't know. I think I like the just rope or the regular cloth or cotton laces that come with the shoe. To me, like, it just makes a lot of sense. I know the other ones have another jound hit on there, but this is a, you know, if you know, you know type of shoe. And jound is a, if you know, you know type of brand. Maybe not anymore, it's kind of grown in popularity. I've worn these out one time, besides wearing them in videos and whatnot, and I love 990v4s i have another pair of 990v4s on this list and this shoe is one of the best in terms of comfort when it comes to 990v4s in terms of aesthetics i feel like it has a very athletic look i'm a taller gentleman you know what i'm saying gentleman status <laughs> but i'm a taller dude and i feel like being an athlete a past athlete i still have that body type and this shoe fits into that very nicely even if you're not that body type if you're someone who just likes 990v4s whether whatever, whatever size of body you are i feel like you'll one get comfort out of shoe you'll get good style out of the shoe and if you can get the jound pair which i think they're releasing like i said today they probably already released and they're probably already sold out by the time i post this video <laughs> but if you can get this shoe you'd be lucky <laughs> i feel blessed enough how did i get it so reached out to by the jound team which is incredible like i i can't say thank you enough to them for helping me one showcase this shoe for you guys to get you guys an early look of it like I did. And also being someone who one, loves Jound and loves New Balance, like my heart kind of just skips a beat. It, it flutters a little bit when when I know that I have this shoe. It, it's, it's really insane. I feel very, very blessed in that regard. For all of my New Balance shoes, I went true to size. So each shoe that I show you is a size 11. That's something that you should keep in mind. Majority of my pairs are made in USA, I believe. Yeah, one, two, three, four of the six are made in made in US, and I still went true to size on the non-made in US. So that's something that you should keep in mind if you're interested in buying New Balance. <laughs> Next up, we have the New Balance 992 in gray. One of the major design features I love about this shoe is that it features that classic gray New Balance upper. This is just, when you think about New Balance, you think about this shoe, and then you also probably think about a version of this shoe at least i do this is the 990 v4 same as the jounds but in gray and the reason why i love this shoe for one is that versatility versatility is so so key when it comes to outfits when it comes to just being able to throw a shoe on and, and wear it with whatever this shoe has versatility in spades it also has comfort in spades quality materials has great aesthetics made in usa for the majority of the sneaker I, I swapped mine out for some cream laces, as you can see right here. They both have a, a cream lace. In terms of aesthetics, comfort, versatility, doesn't get much better than this unless you're rocking with another New Balance sneaker. So absolutely love these. Wear these a ton. They don't really show that much dirt either. I wear them a ton, they don't even get too much dirty. So that's awesome. Next up, we have the 992s in the black silver colorway was able to get these because of the canoe club video that I did. And these honestly inspired me to get the gray pair. I was loving the black pair so much that I was like, man, I gotta have a gray pair. This is just an unbelievable shoe. And like I said, led me to buying the gray pair. What can I say? They're both 992s, exactly the same. This one I feel like is a little bit tougher to style as being a black shoe, but once again, has those same design features in the, in the sense that like, not gonna get dirty, comfortability, has a relative versatility. This has the this has the white lace on it. You can kind of tell the difference between white, I'm showing on the screen, white and cream right there. So you see the difference between those. This one just, I don't know, I like cream laces. Either way, 992, beautiful, beautiful New Balance shoe. And that rhymed as well. <laughs> Okay, next up, I'm gonna show you guys the New Balance 327 in the Aspen Yellow colorway. I absolutely love the 327. It reminds me of a version of a kind of Kai sh sneaker with the kind of waffle outsole. These little dots on the outsole are really, really cool. Give you a little bit of height. This, I believe, and I believe almost all New Balances, they aren't made out of, uh, if they have leather elements, they're usually made out of pig leather, which is something that's a little bit different. This one definitely, I think, it has it in the description that's made out of pig leather, I believe. Very clean, simple GR New Balance shoe. And that's the thing. I think, yeah, I only have two, I only have two collaborations. So everything is, is a GR and that's what I love about New Balance. 
The fact that they create quality products that are general releases, that means I don't have to be chasing or fighting against bots as much as I would with a Nike or Adidas or Yeezy or something like that. That's why these just hit home for me. The 327 deserves more love, especially this Aspen Yellow colorway. Very beautiful colorway, great for the fall. And if you know about the Aspen trees in Colorado, they turn yellow just like this. And they are right now. They literally look just like this. True to size on these, good for working out in, running around, doing whatever. Good for styling if you want to have a sneaker in your, in your outfit. These are beautiful. And these are the least expensive out of all of these. I think these are about $120, $130, something like that. Love these shoes. Last but not least, when it comes to New Balance, these are my creme de la creme. These are my piece de resistance. These are my my magnum opal opus, magnum opus. <laughs> well, all the all the greats of the greats. This is probably my number one most worn New Balance shoe. Pick these up 2019 on sale for about a hundred and like twenty five dollars, and have been literally been wearing them all the time. You know, from 2019 until now, probably a weekly wear for these. Extremely comfortable. As I've worn them more, they've molded to my foot. They have all the same kind of distinctions as the other pairs. Comfort, that New Balance gray versatility, added the cream laces on them to, to make them look a little bit, just stylistically kind of what I like. I don't know, I just like it. You might hate on it, but I like it. And they just have been through so much hikes, trips to Europe, uh, walking around on campus. So, so much has been done in this shoe. So many memories. That's, that's the thing I love about shoes is that when you, when you own shoes and you own them for a good amount of time and you make good memories in them, they, they hold a special place in your heart. And that's exactly what these have done. And this is the beginning of all of the new balances I've ever owned. And it's just the 990 V4. So this is kind of where I divulge when it comes to new balances. I like the 990 series. I like the 992s, the 550s as of recently, and the 327s. What do you guys think about, about the New Balance collection? What shoe did you like the most or don't like the most? Would you ever buy into New Balance? Have you bought into New Balance recently because of these 550s? Or are you not really about that New Balance life? You're more on Jordan, Jordans, Nikes, and Adidas, which is fine. Everyone has interests. Everyone has their own interests. So let me know down in the comment section. Okay, next, let's get the next kind of batch of shoes in order here. I'm gonna move all these other ones and we'll get that going. So next up below me, now we have the Doc Martens and the Doc Martin brand, I feel like has been relatively on the rise within the last three years in terms of popularity. It's been around for a long time, been popular for a long time, but everything ebbs and flows in my opinion. Things come up, things go down, things become more popular and less popular. And that's just how style and everything goes. So for these, all of these Doc Martens are kind of my first divergence from sneakers and understanding that there's more than just sneakers and footwear, understanding that there's more options out there, also comfortable options and high quality options, and just kind of that initial step into buying things that are a little bit outside of that sneaker culture world. Starting off, might as well start with the heavy hitter. We got these Rick Owens, Doc Martens, 1461s, I believe. I believe 1461s is the right name. It's either 1460 or 61. And these are the Bex boots. So they have that Bex outsole. These are chunky, man. These are thick with a, with a capital T. <laughs> and I picked these up. Um, actually, I had to pay resale for these. And so I, I got a pretty good price on them. When I learned about this shoe, this boot in particular, I was like blown away by them. I love the, the neutrality, once again, of the color of the upper. On the front, you have that Rick Owens kind of signature Pentagon design. You have triple stitching on the upper of this boot. You have a zipper detail. The outsole is comfortable. I put another insole in here because I went true to size on these. And I would say that for these, going true to size is probably your best bet, but it doesn't fit like perfectly true to size, if that makes sense. And so while I do enjoy wearing these and these are very, very comfortable to wear, there is a little, like a tiny bit of movement. And what, but when I put the insole inside of them, it actually helped with that movement a little bit and, and made it a better wear for me. I'm six foot three. This makes me about six foot four and a half. And people look at you a little bit differently when you got so much height on you, a lot of, um, <laughs> a lot of design on you, <laughs> a lot of design language, a lot of Rick Owens on you. So 
it's just an interesting shoe been wearing it a ton love the versatility of it it's the first time i ever bought something like this and would i recommend it yeah this is super dope love this boot not for everyone of course but at the same time in my progression my style progression absolutely love having the ability to own this boot one of the coolest boots i've ever owned if not the coolest boot i've ever owned and they're doc martens so i've enjoyed doc martens and their quality and things like that and i've always been interested in rick owens and so this is my first kind of step into that genre so boot number one doc martin number one all right next let's talk about the doc martin or dr martin adrian loafers so this shoe was pretty important for me and my channel at the time call me if you get lost came out everyone saw tyler wearing his loafers and i think loafers were also just becoming something that were more um, interesting to people within the fashion space within fashion and this this shoe right here this is a cheap alternative to kind of what your Prada loafers are or your more expensive loafers. This is a relatively well-made loafer with the polished leather, tassels on it. And for me, I didn't realize how beautiful tassel loafers are. Like I think tassel loafers are incredibly beautiful. In this moment in my kind of progression, I picked up two tassel, actually three tassel loafers and sold one of them because they didn't fit. And for the Doc Martin Adrian loafers, there's a couple things that are good and a couple things that are bad about it. The first thing that's good, I feel like stylistically, really great. Love this shoe from a style standpoint. Put them on, your fit just has a more classy feel to it. Negative, break in time and just comfort overall. It's been a little bit of a tough time with Doc Martens and the comfort level of the shoe. These in particular are not the most comfortable in the world broken them in over the course of a few months and they still have a little bit of rigidness a little bit of just discomfort on them i don't know it's like the toe box area or the vamp area of the loafer is a little bit uncomfortable because i have a little bit of like a fat toe like one of my toes is fat might be tmi but it's just the truth and it hurts my foot sometimes other than that stylistically look good comfort wise eh but I haven't been wearing these as much because of that reason, comfort. And when you just want to be able to put on a shoe and go and do something like have fun with your day, you don't want to be worrying about like sh chafing or like blisters and things like that happening in your shoe. And that's kind of led me to look at other maybe options when it comes to loafers and things like that. But at the same time, I think the shoe is important for me. It's important for someone in their progression. If you can manage that pain, if you can deal with it, you're golden use these wear these love these next up we have two of the same shoes these are the doc martin collaboration with one of my favorites as you know jound and the archie 2 silhouette so i got both the brown and the black colorway i got the brown i mean the black colorway first excuse me so i'll talk about those and this has that classic yellow stitching that all you know majority of doc martins have the iconic stitching in fact these are the only two that have that iconic stitching and i've been wearing these i've been loving wearing these these this, these are both made in england pairs where the ricks and the adrian loafers are not made in england actually i believe that they're made in probably parts of of east asia and the, the quality difference between something that's made in england in terms of the leather quality the construction quality there's literally a spider literally a spider like a dead spider on here See if I can show it to you guys. Right there. That thing, that little thing right there. Oh, did it move? That is a dead spider. <laughs> or a live spider. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> I really just flicked them off. <laughs> Anyways, the quality of this leather is, is beautiful. It's really, really nice. And comparatively, it's just it just is a little bit softer. The ricks are pretty soft, but the Adrian loafers the quality of the leather maybe isn't there and that's why they're not as comfortable and in terms of all the docks that i have these ones right here i wear the most the black archie twos now the brown archie twos are really beautiful as well classic looking shoe you have the down tag right here i've done a review or made videos about all of these but what i haven't been able to do is really wear these as much styling a brown shoe a dress shoe or a kind of elevated shoe a derby i believe it is makes it a little bit tougher i don't know why maybe my wardrobe just isn't suited for a brown like this but i want to incorporate this more this gives me a classic feel once again more elevated more ele elegant kind of shoe and i love the shoe very very beautiful once again quality on point both of these shoes were inspected by susan as it says on the inside tab here for these 
for the Archie 2s, I went down a size. So from a size 11 to a size 10, and they fit really nicely. For the Adrian loafers, there's so much confusion about sizing for the Adrian loafers, but you want to size down. You want to size down. I didn't mention that. For the Adrian loafers, you want to size down. For the Archie 2s, you're going to want to size down as well. And then for the Bex boots, the Rick Bex Doc Martens, you're going to want to go true to size unless you have an extremely narrow foot. So, yeah. Four pairs of Doc Martens. That's the Doc Martens section of the video. Let me know what you think. Which Doc Martin would you be willing to buy? Would it be the Adrian Loafer because of the price point? You can get those for 65. The other ones are a little bit expensive and I love all of them regardless. So, okay, next I'm going to get in some more specialty kind of shoes. So less brands that like less having like multiple shoes from one brand. The next kind of shoes will all be from different brands until we get to Reebok and then Reebok will have some shoes from the same. Uh, we'll have a couple of Reeboks is what I'm trying to say, but Let's move these Doc Martens out of the way, get to the next section. Next, let's talk about one of my favorite bootlegs. These are the Obra 505. I can't remember the actual colorway name of these dunks, but these are bootleg Obra dunks and they're made by a friend of mine, Jonathan Rodriguez, Jay. He's been on the podcast, like I've said, on several occasions. And these are rare, if you wanna call them that. These are, you're not gonna be able to find these at your you know, local sneakers app or your local sneaker store. These are just a bootleg, man. And they have a beautiful color to them, beautiful design. I've kind of talked about these. The design hits on these are incredible from the kind of insole to the swoosh, which is the Obra logo. The tongue is an SB dunk kind of tongue. It's a fat tongue, so that leads me to believe it's more of an SB. The cushioning on here is pretty nice. I've been wearing these. I've only worn these once as well. These are a pretty recent pickup like the Jowns, and so I've only worn these one time. Love this shoe though. I love it because I know the person who created it, and I know that there's a lot of attention to detail that goes into this. And I feel like when it comes to bootlegs, the reason why I almost want to support bootlegs more and do support bootlegs more, not kinda, I do support more bootlegs is because a lot of times, it feels like what bigger brands sometimes do is they water down their product just to create sales. So in the example of Dunks, a lot of the colorways are like classic colorways, sure, but a lot of them I just feel like are a little bit lazy in the sense that like they don't have that story to it. While this one is an homage to New Mexico, which is super dope. They don't have that like dexterity in the product design. This has two layers on it. So if you actually scratch off the layer of this shoe, another layer is revealed and it's red. It came with three pairs of laces. Um, it's just beautiful all around. And I feel like, you know, a lot of brands are kind of cheaping out. Obviously they create collabed products and they try to make those the best version of the shoe. But for these, like, once again, super dope. It's fun to see uh, an independent creator creating their own sneaker. And I love these. They have a good smell to them as well. So you gotta, when it comes to sneakers, you know, they gotta have a good smell to them. <laughs> it's like that new car smell. <laughs> Next, let's talk about the shoes right here. I just picked these up as well. Shout out to Nick and the team over at Collegium. So these are Collegium Pillar Destroyer High Tops, the made in Italy luxury Jordan 1-esque shoe that has been incredibly underrated over the last few years and is finally getting the recognition it deserves. I actually had, haven't had a time to look at this shoe very closely. It looks like we got some triple stitching here on the kind of heel mid panel portion. You have a lace lock loop around that allows you to create a really, really beautiful kind of Rick Owens kind of rude lacing style, which is super beautiful. Perforated toe, the outsole is very nice. And I went with this platinum, let's just say platinum gray. I'm pretty sure it's called platinum gray colorway. This is beautiful to me. You have a yellow midsole, and this also has that like super high quality made in Italy, which it is made in Italy kind of smell to it. This to me, like in terms of sneakers, there you're not gonna be able to find many sneakers that have this many high quality marks in terms of leather construction, laces. You get three pairs of laces with these as well, which I, I swap mine out for like a dirty cream, whatever. Um, and the comfort level on these is pretty good. I wore these out yesterday and loved it. I, f I feel that leather quality when I kind of squeeze into the shoe. And it's brands like Collegium, it's creators like Obra 
that I just love to support, man. This stuff, and a lot of people are like, I, I posted about these on TikTok, and a lot of people are like, oh, those are the Richie Lee, the Richie Lees. And it's kind of funny to hear that because my connection with Collegium is with Nick, and you know, I I watch Richie Lee's videos from time to time. I'm not gonna lie, like some of the videos are interesting, like when he has his panel or whatever. But for the most part, I'm not really tapped in with Rich, Richie Lee and his audience and whatnot. And so for me, like, to me, it's more about the small creator. This is like an independent creator who made his own shoe, who's doing his thing, who's trying to make it big, who's trying to showcase his design and his sneaker language and all these kind of things. And he does it in such a beautiful way. Doesn't cut corners, makes really qual high quality shoes. I'm enjoying this. I'll, I'll probably make a long-term review on this. I'll probably be wearing these all October and I can't wait to continue to wear these and see how they break in over time. 10 out of 10 for these, for real, 10 out of 10. Cause they're new, it's like a, it's like a kind of mini review cause they're new. Cause they're new, it's a mini, it, cause they're new, it's a mini review and you're watching Drew what it do. <laughs> All right, let's get on to the next one. <laughs> All right, next, let's talk about a shoe that I feel like is very, very cool as well. A kind of specialty shoe. It's a specialty kind of shoe. So these are the Puma, Alice Grays, Puma Suede. Alice Gray's and if you don't know Alice Gray sneaker designer sneaker kind of guru type dude has his own brand or the brand is actually named Alice Gray is named after the founder's son I believe and the cool thing about these I've showed these off before is that I'll see if we can get this to change but if you put UV light on this shoe and this is my first ever Puma suede and I know Puma suede are classic and they've been classic but if you kind of continue to put the UV on it, I think you're kind of seeing it now. The shoe turns blue. And that is so, it's such a unique kind of design. Even the laces turn blue. And I'll make sure to show you guys some good B-roll of this as well. I should do that and not be lazy. <laughs> but as you can see, the shoe is kind of turning almost entirely blue because of this. This is a UV ray. I was able to acquire these. I actually helped Alice, the, the brand Alice Gray, promote these on TikTok. And these are a really beautiful, well done Puma suede that's very unique. I think one of my favorite things about this shoe is the puff, the puff laces that they have that they decided to use. And you can kind of see the difference right here. The puff laces they decided to use is a nice touch. And I feel like it's something that it adds just an extra kind of 90s layer feel to it adds a little distinction to it makes it feel almost like a like I said yeah 90s or a retro inspired type of shoe and these I think these are sold out but these are only a hundred dollars for retail for a shoe that changes color in the sunlight and see do we have any other sunlight that we can put these in the sun that change colors I chose blue there's blue and purple haven't worn these as much as I probably could have because of the fact that there's so many different shoes that I acquired in a short amount of time and I feel like these are more for the summertime while uh, we're entering into fall and winter and I'll probably pull these back out summer 2022 fall spring 2022 and wear these a bunch I went true to size with these, but in reality, I probably would have went down a size, down half a size if I if I could. There's a little bit of room, like the heel area kind of is a little bit wider and kind of comes back a little bit further than a, a size 11, I think, or at least for my foot. So these are beautiful. I love these. Not a, not a shoe that a lot of people are going to know about. Very underrated. If you know about the underrated sneaker series, these are extremely, extremely underrated. What do you guys think about these? Do you guys, would you would you own a shoe that changes colors? Like, honestly, like this is, um, I think this is a really interesting concept. It's different, it's just so different. What do you think about it? It literally changes color in the sun. UV activated, some technology in this mug, boy. Next, we have the Onitsuka Tiger AP Big Logo. Extremely, extremely underrated on these. I feel like these do not get the shine, the love that they deserve. Onitsuka. If you don't know about Onitsuka Tiger specifically, I believe that they were the brand that supplied Japan with their running shoes during the Olympics in like the 50s and 60s before they bought Asics in which Asics, because everyone recognizes this logo like, oh, these are some Asics. But in reality, I feel like Onitsuka, it is its own entity and I feel like there's a whole history behind it. Hopefully I'm explaining it. And if you're an Onitsuka buff, let me know down in the comment section. As you can see, you have a two-tone kind of shoe. This shoe has a white, um, what's the sneaker term for the inside of the shoe? The inside <laughs> and the outside is, is black. 
You also have that kind of aged midsole once again. This is like a darker brown though, this aged midsole. It's like a brown versus like this, versus like the Collegium pair is more like yellow. See the difference? It's like a, I mean, they're both really, really cool. Anyways, this is more brown and you have that perforated toe once again. You also have like a, almost like just like golf, like, like these little uh, divots, divots in the outsole that make it look golf or make it look like a, I don't know, they just make it look a little bit different. These little bumps in the outsole. You have a mud guard that's pretty rubberized and pretty stable as well. These are super dope in my opinion. You're not gonna be able to find shoes like this, like people wearing shoes like this a lot of times in the US, at least where I live. This is a specialty shoe in my opinion. And I feel like the fact that I was able to get it for $65 on sale, speaks to the fact that not a lot of people know or care about Onitsuka Tiger, it seems like. <laughs> and the, the quality of the shoe, if I do have to say so myself, it's not like worth $200. I can, I can feel it and it doesn't feel like it's worth $200. But what I love is just the aesthetics. The, the aesthetics of the shoe is, is unreal. It kind of reminds me of like, a, like an Air Max of some sort mixed in with like just a classic, like I don't know, like it reminds me of like a Japanese like sports shoe i don't know very cool and i you know me if i if you know me i love anime and different japanese aspects and culture and magazines and americana all these things and this is just a really cool shoe to represent that interest and i was able to get them for 65 and not many people have them which you know it's kind of cool to say that you appreciate something that maybe some people just looked over that's fun that's the fun part about collecting and having sneakers that a lot the reason why a lot of people do it so these actually went down to half a size in their comfort is pretty good as well probably eight out of ten absolutely love these haven't been able to wear these as much like i said because once you get to that 20 sneaker range or 20 shoe range you can only put one pair of shoes on and while i haven't worn these a ton probably i got them in june probably eight or ten wears Maybe that's not a ton, but that's a decent amount for me. And I've been loving wearing them. And uh, they actually come with an extra pair of laces so, too. These are rope laces. And I, I laced them up in this particular manner because I didn't like the way it looked when you like lace it up like a, like this. I didn't like the way it looked for this shoe. Hopefully you guys can see, like, is this too bright? Hopefully you can see. Um, but yeah, Onisuki Ta, Oni, Onitsuka Tiger AP Big Logo. That's what these are. Try to find them. Not very expensive if you can't find them. Don't overspend on these. Beautiful nonetheless. Next, let's talk about Represent. The British luxury brand Represent Clothing. Now, these to me, once again, kind of like the Obras, and I've never actually compared these, but these I feel like have a similar design language and the way that the represent raptor low kind of reminds me of a shoe that's somewhat mimicking and these are both kind of dirty on the bottom somewhat mimicking a dunk if that makes sense and oops somewhat mimicking a dunk and once again i was kind of like this has kind of been the moment we're in for sneakers is very dunk heavy but i thought i thought that this this shape was really even more prominent than a dunk. I love the colorway of this. Hopefully it's kind of coming up in camera and the, not washing it out, but I love this colorway, absolutely beautiful colorway. Suede along the entire upper of the shoe. You have really cool kind of frosted laces, not frosted, but kind of monotone flush laces that go with the shoe. You have that high quality leather on the inside as, as a leather insole. Reminds me of Collegium in the, in the way that the, the shoe feels because it is a relatively high quality shoe for the price point that you can get it at. And I've been wearing these a lot, but not as much anymore. I don't know why. Because I definitely like the look of them. In fact, I love the look of them. Every time I look at them, they look really, really cool. And I just haven't been wearing them as much. I don't know why. I don't know why. But very, very cool shoe nonetheless. I, I kind of maybe got caught up in a little bit of hype of represent, but I don't I don't think so because it's not like a lot of people around me wear represent. I just thought it was something that was different and I picked it up and I probably should wear these more. I mean, in all honesty, I've worn them a good amount of time. Like the outsole is pretty freaking dirty, but I should wear them even more. And I haven't experienced any bad markers with this. 
One of the key design features of this shoe is it, some people get a kick out of this if, you, if you're in the rep community, but it literally says rep on the side to represent, represent, which is the name of the brand. And these are sweet, I don't know. These are super dope, underrated. What do you think about these? Would you wear, I mean, do you not like this shoe? Like, is it just overpriced to you? It might be overpriced. I think these are really cool. What do you think? Let me know. <laughs> I'm curious to know, because I, I should wear these more and they should get more love, but they don't. <laughs> they don't. <laughs> Ore Empire City High. Out of all the shoes I own, if I wear this shoe, more people will look at me than any other shoe. People will kind of stare at your feet, especially when I went to New York. If I post a shoe on the internet, if I post it on Instagram or TikTok or whatever, more people will ask about this shoe. These are the Ore Empire City High V2s. And this shoe means a lot to me for a lot of different reasons. For one, Ray really was really gracious enough to kind of include me into the kind of early release of this drop. I was able to get these. And ever since getting these, these have probably been some of my favorite shoes to own, bar none, without a doubt. Some of my favorite shoes to own. And I, I never plan to resell these. I never plan to get rid of these unless I'm really, really down bad. But at the same time, like there's something incredibly special about this shoe that there's a there's a magic about this shoe. Everyone loves Jordan ones, obviously, or everyone has an understanding of the hype of Jordan ones. <laughs> but for these, they aren't a Jordan one. They're a bootleg of a Jordan one. And the reason why that I feel like this shoe gets so much tension, it's such an eye grabbing shoe is because the colorway for one, you have this like gray and I love gray. You have this gray kind of cream eggshell upper mixed in. You have Lady Liberty on the side. You have Manhattan skyline. Very, very symbolic features of New York and also America. The quality on this is A1, super good quality. Has a dust bag in the box, comes with extra laces. Has the uh, New York Transit on the insole. I think for Queens specifically, or maybe not for Queens specifically, but it has New York Transit. Just the attention to detail that Ray went into with this shoe versus some of the shoes that Jordan actually releases. This to me, like I said, I, I made a TikTok. I was like, maturing is realizing that this is the best Jordan one to come out all year. And a lot of people got a little bit offended. And maybe, I think, I think, I think it is true. Like earlier this year, this came out. For me, this is my sneaker of the year. Like I absolutely love this shoe. And I can't believe I just said that because this is a bootleg and you know, Ray is a friend and a colleague of mine. But like this to me is like my sneaker of the year in the sense that it's incredibly dope. Everyone asks about this shoe and it's kind of like underground, kind of like a jound or something like that. You got to know to know. And that, that's what I love about this shoe for sure. Comfort wise, can't beat it. It's just like any other Jordan 1, really. Stylistically, it's an 11 out of 10. From the fact that I know Ray and friends with Ray, and you know what I mean, it just it just hits really, really different. I love this shoe, I don't know. Do you ever have a moment with your shoe and you're like, man, I love this shoe, man. That's all I feel about these. And the fact that someone you know can make a shoe like that to make you feel that way, it's more, it's even more special than in a way than some of the other shoes. So love these, wore these in New York. Wore, wear these in Denver all the time. People ask about them. Absolutely adore this shoe. Absolutely have the utmost respect for Ray or NYC. These are beautiful, man. Can't beat them. And if you can, let me know. Some people like Fugazi, but I like Ore. <laughs> Next, let's talk about a vegan sneaker. So these are the Saye, and I finally learned how to pronounce that. Modelo 89 Vegan Gris Sneaker which is Spanish for gray. So these are a entirely, no, not entirely. The upper is constructed of a, a vegan corn leather. Then you have organic cotton laces, bamboo lining. You have a synthetic rubber. So essentially what you have is an incredibly sustainable sneaker. And this to me, I feel like is the future. The only problem with the Saye shoe is the kind of weight and the comfort of it. But this is so close to being kind of something that I feel like can change the entire course of, of sneakers. Brands like this, small ones like this out of Europe, I think they're out of Portugal or Spain, I can't remember which one. This brand and what they're doing and how they're creating this, this shoe with all, this, all its sustainable aspects 
is insane literally insane like i said there's a couple things they need to improve upon but i still believe that in the in the near future within the next year or two they improve upon the the comfort and kind of the the shoe is pretty narrow so it almost looks like it caters specifically to women but it really can be worn by anyone but it's a very narrow shoe but at the same time it has that kind of like i said modello 89 so it means model of the year 2000 or 1989 almost said 2089 it's a very kind of vintage inspired shoe we'll see how they can continue to evolve and grow and market this shoe reach american audiences they are in europe so i feel like it might become popular in europe before it becomes popular here in the u.s but it has those design features that you want it has beautiful gray as if you haven't noticed the last like five shoes have been like gray and cream <laughs> so it has that beautiful gray kind of hit cream laces which i love cream midsole which you know i love as well uh, midsole and outsole excuse me and then it's just a, a nice white clean shoe so can't beat it haven't worn these as much once again like i said when you have so many shoes it's tough to wear them all keep doing what you do continue to work on your craft continue to grow continue to improve i have no doubt in my mind that saye will be a relatively prominent name within the vegan sustainable sneaker space kind of like um what's that one sneaker veja like Veja, Saye will be right there and people will be calling it Say, <laughs> but it's pronounced Saye, people. <laughs> All right, next, let's see if I can get in position. Let's talk about Reebok. So starting off the Reebok kind of section, I wanna use this box as just my platform for all the Reeboks. These are the Storium FG Reebok Club C's. And once again, you have a cream looking sneaker with gray upper <laughs> and you have some blue hits. The reason why I picked these up is because I saw the kind of campaign that Story MFG did for this shoe and I was blown away by it for one. You have an entire linen upper, so the entire upper is made out of linen. You have organic cotton on the inside. So this is another kind of sustainable shoe. Story MFG is a very dope sustainable brand and to see them kind of go a little bit mainstream and collaborate with Reebok, a sneaker company that makes the, their products a little bit more accessible. Story MFG, very sustainable brand like I said. The price point of their products makes it a little bit unattainable for the majority of people, including myself. And I wanted to kind of divulge in Story MFG and, wear, and have these Club C's. Haven't worn these as much, and I honestly haven't pulled them out the box in a second, really. Um, but I, if I look at them, I realize what I was thinking and how nice of a shoe this is. I need to wear these more once again. Another shoe that I just need to throw into my rotation, wear more of a Club C. It's classic, classic, classic shoe. I think it can be worn in the winter as well. Very, very beautiful. Can't beat a Club C because it's just nice. Next up, we have another Club C. These are the Jound JJJ. If you kind of don't get the, the theme here, a lot of Jound. I, I like Jound. I, I really do. I really love Jound. Was able to pick these up because of uh, someone who reached out to me on Instagram, sold me these Reebok Club C's, the first pair of the Jounds. You have that white shoe, gray and cream. If you don't see the theme here, I don't know what you're looking at. <laughs> he sold me the Club C's and the classic nylons, which are also a white shoe cream and they have like beige hits. <laughs> so these are uh, these were kind of a grail of mine. It's funny to say that because I typically denounce the idea of having a grail, or at least it's hard for me to think about grails. But this is a shoe I wanted for a very long time, relatively like one to two years. I wanted these for a year or two, and I saw the resale prices, and I just couldn't justify spending what the what the resale market had for these. And I feel like the price has gone down a little bit because of. Just the fact that John released another pair of these and because of the fact that over time people probably less interested in this shoe, but not me. I'm still interested in this shoe. I'm still, I'm still a fan. And I love this shoe. This to me like is like the epitome of what Jound represents. Not too much branding. Jound hits throughout. Very subtle Reebok hit. Versatility in the shoe, just like with the New Balances. Comfort. Leather is a little bit more quality than your typical Club C. I love it. Next up, we have the classic nylons i was a little bit loud this i feel like is the most underrated or one of the most underrated down collaborations this and the uh, archie twos are probably the most underrated this is a beautiful shoe the classic nylon deserves a little bit more credit it has comfort has style versatility once again those are my favorite words in this video <laughs> count, count how many times i've said the word versatility <laughs> it'd probably be a lot so i actually picked these up 2020 and sold them so i actually made videos about 
the Club C, the second pair of the Club C for Jown, and this, the classic nylons. Picked these up, did reviews on them early on in my YouTube journey, wherein only, you know, a thousand people watch me. And shout out to those a thousand people who, who would watch, because I'm not complaining at all. And I sold them, which was a mistake. I missed them. These were a kind of two for one kind of deal with Club C's from an Instagram seller. Jumped on the opportunity and absolutely love this shoe, man. Uh, oh man, love this shoe. Haven't been able to wear them yet because once again, the <laughs> the amount of shoes I have is piling up. But I plan to wear these a ton fall, fall winter 2021 and spring 2022. So these are beautiful to me. These these may be a these may be better than the, the club C's in a way. Like I don't know, the shape is a little bit more chunky but still is sleek like it has a little bit more of a d different interesting shape to it when you have it on foot sometimes the club c's can make you look very flat-footed but this doesn't do that the, the classic nylons don't do that so that's my reebok collection three shoes for reebok three shoes for reebok four for doc martens six for new balance and then all these other ones are independent brands and we have two more Two more shoes I want to show you guys. So let's talk about these for a second. These are the Vans Kids of Immigrants Lowland CCs. And a lot of people are like, Kids of Immigrants? What the heck does that mean? Literally, that's the name of the brand. If you look at these, it says Kids of Immigrants. It's a brand out in California about all of these kids of immigrants that came together and made a brand about, you know, a fashion brand, a streetwear brand in the in the state of California. And they had the opportunity to collaborate with Vans and this is their first collaboration. Now there's a couple things I feel like that make this shoe special. The first one is the upper of this shoe is meant to be distressed. And what you get in the box with this shoe is a, a flat kind of two inch by two inch piece of sandpaper and you can sandpaper off and fray the shoe up. You have a nice little lace lock you have the Comfy Kush Vans insole, which makes these relatively comfortable, even though they're very light. I've never had a pair of Lowland CCs. Gave me a good first impression. Very comfortable, very flat-footed. I don't skate in them. I just kind of wear them and they have that distressed look. Once again, they have that cream lace if you, and yeah, these are, these are very underrated. Just like the Onitsuka Tigers, just like the Onitsuka Tigers, these are gonna be some of your most underrated sneakers. No one is gonna be wearing these. Literally no one you know no one's made a video about these on YouTube but me. No one you know has these shoes and you're not gonna be able to find these shoes on the internet. This is like one of the, like in the history of the world, like in a hundred years, like we're gonna look back on the Vans collaborations that no one talks about. And this is gonna be one of them, literally. Like no one's going to talk about this shoe. I wore these a lot in 2020. Haven't been wearing them as much, but once again, wanna wear them more, love this shoe, and <sighs> these are beautiful, I love this shoe. This is a very beautiful shoe. Last but not least, we have the GH Bass Weijin Tassel Loafers. They are actually called the 90s Kilty Tassel Loafers because of their midsole, or I guess their outsole shape and the kind of form of the shoe. It kind of reminds me of the 90s and that's the entire design inspiration. These are like a 90s loafer, essentially. So if you wanna find these, just look up GH Bass Weijin 90s Loafer. For these, I went down a half a size, fit really, really nicely. In terms of loafers, these are my favorite. In term, like compared to the Doc Martens, these have a more sleek look. Like for my foot, I have a narrow foot. The docks are a little bit wide. The outsole on these is like this like TPU or like it's like this rubber kind of weird outsole thing. But I think that the leather on this, it's okay. It's not, I wouldn't say it's better. I was gonna say it's better than Doc Martens, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't go that far. I think they're both probably comparable. The thing I like about these is the narrowness of it. I like how the tassels are a little bit further down. It has a more classic look to it and it just kind of, fits my foot better. So I wear these more. I haven't worn these as much, but I do love dressing these up when I'm wearing whatever outfit I'm wearing, or not dressing these up, but I do love adding a little bit of like a elevated feel to my outfit with these. Once again, not a sneaker. I have a lot of sneakers, but this is another one of those shoes that's not a sneaker that is more so a uh, classic shoe. And I've divulged in this and I absolutely love these. Half size down, comfort is about an eight out of 10. Style is about an eight out of 10 as well. Um, versatility is about probably 10 out of 10. You can wear these with a lot of things. This is the last shoe, man. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. It was a lot, it was a lot of fun kind of going through and talking about each and every shoe. They all have a special place in my heart. Some of them I'll probably kind of sift through and get rid of. There's a few that are I'll never sell probably just because you know they mean a lot to me. The Ores, the some of the New Balances, the Onitsuka I'll probably never sell. Everybody else is on the cutting block. <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Let me know which shoe interested you the most in the video. Which shoe caught your eye the most? 
obviously you have timestamps for all of the shoes so if you want to go back and watch and if you have any questions about the shoes please feel free to dm me or to leave a comment down in the comment section i respond to i respond to 99 percent of the comments unless you say unless you say something wild I'm not responding but if you have a question 100 percent of the time i'm responding if if i see it if i miss it i apologize um, just send me a DM. But anyways, as always, I'm spreading peace, love, and positivity in 2021. So that means I'm spreading peace, love, and positivity to you. Wherever you are in the world, have a wonderful rest of your day. I'll see you guys next time. Peace. Yo, what's up, post vid, vid squad? You know how we do. Two fist bumps for the one time. Thank you guys for watching to this point in the video. As always, I appreciate you guys so, so, so much. I literally just found out today that I am a part of the creators of the week or like featured creators on the explore page on YouTube, which is insane. I don't know if it'll still be here or if that'll still be there by the time that this video goes live, but literally that is insane, man. Like that is crazy. I've been putting a lot of work in and it just goes to show like, you put the work in, it, putting the work in never fails, really, in my opinion. That's that's just the way I view life. Some people want to talk about meritocracy, but if you put the work in, a lot of times, you'll reap the reward. Did you guys like the video? That was my entire shoe collection. my Literally my entire collection laid out in the video. Um, some people probably think I have more shoes, but I don't. And I don't even have a way to really organize them. They're all literally on the ground behind me or behind you, behind the camera. <laughs> so there's that. We have another video later this week talking about the comparison of Carhartt work in progress and Levi's made and crafted, which is gonna be a fun video. Um, let me know if you're interested in that title, if you have other video ideas. I wrote down a lot of your guys' ideas that you guys gave me from previous weeks. Also, let me know, what do you think the sneaker of the year is? That's a, always a very controversial, interesting kind of topic. Let me know which you believe, which sneaker you believe is the sneaker of the year. And I'll kind of have a debate with you down in the comment section, something like that. Cause I don't actually, I don't know what sneaker of the year is. I said the Ore is in terms of my collection, obviously, but it, or the Ore is can't be sneaker of the year just because they're a bootleg. So I don't think that that's how sneakers work. <laughs> So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Like I said, um, have a wonderful rest of your day. Peace. What's good post vid vid gang. You guys are literally the 1% of the 1% who are watching this video. And I want to extend an incredible thank you. I'm so thankful for you guys who watch these videos, who tune in, who comment, who make this channel possible. I, I can't do it without you guys for real. The discord, like I said, is coming soon. You guys are seriously the best in the entire world. Hopefully you enjoyed today's video. Just wanted to say thank you one more time. Enjoy the rest of your day.